Hello and welcome to Easter Sunday 2020. Now I know we're here and you're watching this uh, with everybody else that's watching this and you're maybe thinking, man, this is not what I expected Easter to be like this year. You know, maybe you expected to get all dressed up fancy. Uh, maybe that sundress that you have or the suits or whatever and come to church or maybe you were planning a trip to visit family and go on a couple Easter egg hunts, have a nice meal together eat a bunch of chocolate and just go into a sugar coma. Whatever the case is, you probably were not expecting on Easter Sunday to be sitting where you're at, maybe in your pajamas with a cup of coffee, maybe having a meal as you're watching this. <laughs> and this isn't what you expected Easter to be like this year. You know, it was unexpected but when we think about it this is almost fitting to what happened about 2,000 years ago and why we celebrate Easter because of the empty tomb because Jesus body was not found in that tomb that was something else that was unexpected especially for the groups of people that were involved with all of that because we have two different groups there we have the religious leaders those that push the Roman guards to arrest Jesus and to put him to death. And then you have his followers, his disciples. And both these groups, when we read in scripture, although Jesus told them that he'd be resurrected, they weren't really prepared. It was kind of an unexpected theme thing for them. And we read about the religious leaders in Matthew 26, 62 through 65. It says, the next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, sir, we remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. So even the religious leaders that had put Jesus to death, they remembered what Jesus said to them, that he would be resurrected. But they weren't worried about him physically resurrecting. They were worried about his disciples stealing his body. But when we read the accounts of the disciples, they had no, no intention of doing that. They were busy either going back to their old jobs or were scared and in hiding. And we read in Mark 14, 48 through 52, that... When Jesus was arrested, his disciples had split. They left him. They abandoned him because they were scared about what would happen to them. It says, Jesus asked them, am I some dangerous revolutionary? This is on the night that he was betrayed. That you come with swords and clubs to arrest me. Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Then all his disciples deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. And so you can try to imagine what the disciples were feeling at this time. Their teacher, their leader, the one they'd been following for years now, was put to death, was arrested and put to death, and they had run away. And we see two things happen for the disciples. One, they go back to what they're, they're used to. Some of them go, go to fish. And we read about that in John 21, 1 through 3. It says, afterwards, after Jesus' resurrection, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. And if you continue reading in that account, Jesus actually comes as they're pulling back in, and he does the exact same miracle when he first met them. He says, cast your nets onto the other side, and so many fish were caught in the boats that the boats began to be weighed down and, and 
you can continue reading that account there in John 21, but they went back to what they were used to, to their jobs. And they were also in hiding. We find that in John chapter 20, verse 19. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And so for these groups of people, they weren't expecting the resurrection of Jesus. It was an unexpected thing. I think you know, if the disciples were, were expecting his resurrection, they would have been by the tomb waiting, I think. Um, but we see that that doesn't happen. And so, like today, where we didn't expect Easter 2020 to be like this, turn out the way it is right now, people back then were living in the unexpected time between Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. But Easter, we know, is celebrated around the world because we remember that it's a very crucial part of our faith. We celebrate Christmas because we remember the Son of God coming down to our world, taking on flesh and blood. And if that didn't happen, if the Son of God didn't come down to this world, there wouldn't be Christians. And we also celebrate Good Friday because we remember the Son of God giving up His life on the cross so that we could have it. And again, if that hadn't happened, there wouldn't be Christians. And today, on Easter, we celebrate and remember that Jesus was raised from the dead and now He sits at the right hand of God, petitioning Him on our behalf, as well as preparing a place for us up in heaven. And again, if Jesus wasn't resurrected, then we would be worshiping a dead God. And again, there probably wouldn't be any Christians. Paul writes to the Corinthian church, talking about the eyewitnesses, all those people that saw Jesus after his death, after his resurrection. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 9, I passed on to you what was most important and what also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I have been born at the wrong time, this is Paul speaking, I also saw him, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. So we see in this account that at this time that Paul was writing to the Corinthian church, there were over 500 people who saw Jesus after his resurrection. And when we look at history today, we know that many of Jesus' disciples, they gave up their lives and never renounced seeing Jesus after his resurrection. That they took that with them to, to their grave. And if that had been a lie and their life was being put to risk because of it, it'd be hard for them to, to keep lying about it. They would tell the truth, but they took it to their grave because they saw the risen Savior. We serve a living God. You know, my pastor that I, in the church that I grew up in, he, he told us about one time driving down the street and he saw a bumper sticker that says, My God lives. Sorry to hear about yours. Easter is a celebration of Jesus' resurrection, of Jesus ascending into heaven to be at the right hand of God and petitioning him on our behalf again and just preparing that place for us in eternity. With all these things said, all these things in our mind, I just want to read the account of that empty tomb being found. And we're going to read Matthew chapter 28, 1 through 10. It says, Early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning. His clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. 
Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are, you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead just as he said he would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he was risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. So again, both the religious leaders and the disciples were told that Jesus would be raised from the dead three days later after his death. But when we read the accounts in scripture, we see surprise upon finding out that Jesus was resurrected, that the unexpected happened. Likewise, we today have been told about God's plan already. We know what is going to happen, that Jesus will return once again and he's going to call up everyone who serve him. He's going to call them up to be with him. In Mark chapter 13, verse 26 to 27, we see a description of this. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. So we did not expect to be having Easter shut in, in our homes and under this 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 quarantine, making sure that we're doing these social distancing things and that we wouldn't be able to visit our families on Easter. Just like the religious leaders didn't expect to hear about that empty tomb. But again, we're living in that time where God has revealed his plan to us and we can expect Jesus to return for his followers again, that Jesus is coming back. Or, you know, the choice is yours we can go through another time of unexpectedness. It's up to you. You know, no one can force you to serve Christ. Your parents, they can't pray you into heaven. You can't get into heaven just by believing that there is a God or just by doing good things or occasionally going to church. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ himself. Scripture tells us that Jesus is, in John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can go to the Father except through Him. So to be with the Father in heaven, you have to do two things. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So declaring that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that He is Lord you will be saved. And along with that in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, uh, all wickedness. So these two things, admitting, admitting that uh, Jesus is Lord, that he, God raised him from the dead and believing it in your heart and asking for forgiveness of your sins, those are the things you need to do in order to not go through another unexpected event when Jesus returns to take up his followers. You might think, well, I don't need to do that because I have no sin in my life. Well, Scripture tells us differently. It says in Romans 3.23, For everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. And again, no one can force you to make this decision to serve God. Not even God. He could force you, but he chooses not to because of how much love he has for you. He doesn't force you to do anything you don't want to do. But realize, if you go your whole life choosing to not be with God, he's not going to force you to be with him when it comes time for judgment. Instead, He's going to give you what you've been choosing your whole life, what you've been wanting. 
And if you want to not be with God, then for eternity, you won't be with God. You'll be cut off from his blessings, from his glory, from his presence. You know, things that everybody experiences, even if they're not serving God. Because that's what you choose to have when you choose to not serve him. You choose to deny those things that you're already experiencing. You're experiencing this life, the breath of life that God gives you, the blessings that he gives you, even when you're not serving him, these signs to get your attention to focus on him. You know, the Bible describes being thrown out of God's presence as a weeping and gnashing of teeth. In Luke 13, 28 through 30, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you will be thrown out. Being cut off from God's presence for eternity, that is hell. And it's not going to be a fun thing to experience. So today, no matter where you're watching this from, what you're dressed in, what you're doing, I want to give you the opportunity to not be left behind, to not go through another unexpected event when Jesus comes back for his followers. To not go through that time of, of unexpectedness again. If today you want to follow Christ, if you want to give your life over to Christ and be ready for when he returns or, or to be ready for when you are in front of that judgment throne, I'm going to lead you in a prayer to do just that. And you don't, need to, you don't need to be in a church to do this. You don't need to be in the same room as a pastor or a Christian to do this. You can do this right now where you're at. So again, no one can force you to serve God. That has to be your decision. But if today you want to join God's family, if today you want to not have to go through another unexpected event when... Christians all throughout the world are called up to be with Jesus. If today you make that choice, then follow along with me in this prayer. and Repeat what I, after me for this prayer. So let's pray. Dear Lord, today I declare you as Lord and Savior over my life. Dedicating my life to you, and I ask for the forgiveness of my sins and for your help in becoming the person you want me to be. And I ask these things in your name. Amen. So if today you chose to follow along with me in that prayer, congratulations and welcome to the family of Christ. And now you might be wondering, okay, I prayed this prayer, but what, what now? What, what happens now? Well, if, you're in, if you made that choice and, and you're wondering that right now, I encourage you to either give me a call, I'll put my number right here on the screen so you can give me a call or you can find someone that you know serves the Lord and they will either help you answer your questions or they'll help get you to someone that can answer your questions. But again, congratulations on being a fellow family member in Christ's family. And now you don't have you won't have to worry about that time when Jesus comes to call up all his followers or or being in front of the judgment seat if you prayed that prayer because now Jesus has cleansed you of your sin and you've been made a child of God. And so with all that said, congrats. Uh, this is a huge thing to be happening in your life. You know, we celebrate Easter because we remember that our Savior, He lives. He is petitioning. He is, he is petitioning on our behalf to God. Forgiving our sins through the blood that He shed. And we remember that He's going to come back one day. And He's going to pick up, He's going to take up all of His believers, all of His followers to be with Him. So with all that said, guys, if you chose to serve him, great. Get connected with someone else that you know serves him and get those questions answered that you might have or that you're going to have here in the next few days about what you're supposed to do. 
And for, for everyone, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. And as you go about your day today with whatever plans you have, remember that today we celebrate the empty tomb 2,000 years ago, that Jesus wasn't found there in that tomb, but he lives. And that's something to celebrate. So remember that today. And guys, happy Easter. I know just for a couple things here, just a couple housekeeping notes, I've been getting questions um, on what we're, what people are supposed to do with their tithes and offerings. Um, you can either mail that to the church uh, address, and that's found, uh, put that, I'll put that right here as well, the church address, um, and send your checks in that way, and they'll go into to the offering or you can go to the church if you have a key and there's a box in the back. You can put your offering in that and it'll be counted. Uh, we have someone counting it once a week there. So you can do that for either of those. But if you guys have any questions or anything like that, if you just came to the Lord today, give me a call. Find someone that serves the Lord. Uh, maybe you have a friend that you know serves the Lord. and Get connected with them and ask them those questions. But again, guys, thank you for watching today. If you miss the kids' message, there is a kids' message that was done by Lance Stegman. If you scroll a little bit further down on this church page here, uh, you can find that kids' message and you can, you can see the lesson that he has for them. But with that, guys, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day as you're eating the chocolate, as you're uh, maybe you're Skyping or Zoom calling with your family or just maybe a normal phone call with your family. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and he lives forever. And that is something to celebrate. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good Easter.